Hello, everybody. Welcome into the program. I'm Charlie Arnold. It's Friday. It's a great day, in my opinion. Uh, I'm also not being accused of running a sex, sex trafficking ring. So probably a little bit of a difference between my life and one of the most famous rappers' lives that I grew up absolutely loving. So this is just a bizarre circumstance. I feel like as the days have gone by this week, the story just gets, gets get even crazier and crazier. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of a pun that I wrote myself last night, and I'm uh, kind of proud of it. So it was first he was Puff Daddy, then he was P. Diddy, but is he soon going to become P. Did it? How's that one? Uh, Okay, everyone, the allegations really just keep stacking up against P. Diddy. He has five accusers up to this point, both men and women. That was a little bit bizarre. Uh, They both allege that he's guilty of sexual assault and also of running a sex trafficking ring. Now, both of his mansions in L.A. and Miami were raided earlier this week by Homeland Security. And next thing we knew, his private jet was landing in the Caribbean. I'm unsure what the laws are there that he thought that that was a smart move. I don't know if there was any jurisdiction by the United States where they could arrest him on that land. I'm not sure, but he immediately took off. I think he stopped and refueled somewhere in the United States, then went straight on to the Caribbean. This was right as the news was breaking the other day. Now, the story, like I said before, gets literally crazier and crazier as time goes on, including the fact that we now know that Diddy used a former Syracuse hoops player as his drug mule. This kid, I guess he's not really a kid anymore, 25 years old, Brendan Paul, he was arrested in Miami at the Opelika Airport on cocaine and marijuana possession charges. So here's his mugshot from when he was arrested the other day. And we can admit, it looks a little nuts, disheveled hair, I don't know, his skin's not looking too good. Looks like he hasn't slept in quite a while. But now let's throw it back. I want to show you his picture from when he was still playing basketball at Syracuse. Here's his picture from his college days. I mean, look at this kid. He's adorable. He's clean cut. He's in shape. He looks like he's been sleeping. He's thriving, really. I have no idea how you go from this to becoming a drug mule for one of the most famous rappers in the world. I have no idea how that happens, but I'm sure his parents have been waking up this week, scratching their heads, thinking, where did we go wrong? I have no idea. Now, according to a lawsuit, Paul distributed guns and drugs to Diddy. And speaking of distributing drugs, according to one of Diddy's latest accusers, his former producer, whose name is Rodney Jones, The rapper had employees in his home, maids, butlers, who would carry around fanny packs as they were doing their jobs to supply cocaine to the people in the home. And this right here in the video you're seeing in front of me, this is the the former Syracuse basketball player getting arrested the other day. Not a very happy moment for him. Handcuffed, taken away. Life is probably over as he knew it. Uh, Now listen, the Rodney Jones character, one of Diddy's accusers, also alleges that Diddy had sex trafficking parties on a regular basis full of underage women and claims all types of people were there, including, this one was a bombshell, Prince Harry. Now, Prince Harry isn't being charged with anything. He's not in any type of legal trouble. But the fact that there is you know, the acknowledgement that he might have been involved with these sex parties, definitely, of course, not a good look for him. Uh, the royal family is probably horribly embarrassed, as they already have been by him and Meghan Markle's antics since, well, for years now. Anyways, the accusations keep getting worse. It doesn't stop there. There's another accuser, Joy Dickerson Neal. She filed a lawsuit alleging that P. Diddy drugged her, sexually assaulted her, and also secretly recorded her assault back when she was a college student, meaning she was underage. All of this going back to 1991. So this type of stuff that Diddy's been involved with, at least that he's being accused of, stems back decades at this point. So I told you, I warned all of you, when I started the show, this story literally was wild. And it seems like every day we're getting more insight into Diddy being an absolute creep. As moments from his past, they keep resurfacing now that he's making all of these headlines. For example, one that came across my radar that I feel 
especially invested in because I was tuning in recently to the quiet on set documentary about the Nickelodeon heydays from the mid nineties to mid two thousands about Dan Schneider, the creepy executive producer on set. Well, now we're seeing that P Diddy was a guest star on all that during that same era, 2002, he was a guest star. He came on the show and Part of the joke of him being on the show was he was trying to convince the other child actors to put a toy helicopter down another child's pants on the program. At the time, maybe just seemed like a harmless joke, but now that we have more insight into how creepy Nickelodeon was and potentially how creepy P. Diddy was, if all of this does end up being true, uh, this just does, does, does not sit well with all of us. Additionally, there's this video. It's a video of 15 year old Justin Bieber in the rapper from obviously back in the day. Watch this. Uh, where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. He signed the Usher. He signed the Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, He's with me, so, um, and, yeah, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. They're going to go buck full crazy, ladies and gentlemen. No idea what that means, uh, but every little thing that happened now has to be looked at through a different lens, and obviously we heard from Usher earlier this week as well, who was reminiscing on his time growing up under the guardianship of Diddy, and uh, he even mentioned like some of the stuff that would go on in the house he could not even speak about. He wasn't saying it necessarily in an accusatory sense, Uh, but obviously Usher was exposed to probably things he shouldn't have been exposed to at the age that he was, and I'm sure Justin Bieber followed down that same path as Usher did. Okay, so here we are, five accusers at this point, some of who have been named, others who have remained anonymous still, but this whole investigation stemmed back in 2023, it all began Singer Cassie, who dated Diddy for years, she came forward, claimed sexual and physical abuse at the hands of Diddy. And at the time, I remember thinking to myself, is this woman telling the truth? Obviously, you all know how I feel about the Me Too movement. And I felt like there is the possibility that when you come forward so many years later, maybe you're looking for something in return. Maybe you have your eyes on a jackpot. I don't know. So I always in my mind had maybe a little bit of suspicion that it might not be so truthful. Now, because of everything that's going on, I am looking back and I'm thinking, I'm shook. I mean, I completely loved Diddy growing up. He was one of my favorite rappers, but if what she was saying, you know, was back in November, and now we have all of these other accusers coming forward, uh, there's a good chance where there's smoke, there's fire. And obviously I don't, I don't know what the police have as far as information goes and what they were able to obtain during those raids on his mansions earlier in the week. But uh, this does not look good for Diddy. And I have a feeling this is going to do some serious damage uh, to his empire and also his legacy. And I have a feeling if they do, in fact, deem all of this information that they're being given to be accurate and true, uh, everything's going to come crumbling down very, very quickly. Uh, And now on that note, I obviously feel very passionate about this story. It's wild. I was not expecting to wake up this week and learn that Diddy potentially ran a sex trafficking ring. And I'm sure my next guest did not feel that way either. So let's go ahead and bring in Outkick contributor, Outkick writer, Mike Gunzelman, the big guns, to weigh in. Guns, did you have it on your bingo card this week that Diddy (laughs) was the leader of a sex trafficking ring potentially? No, I mean, I did not. Uh, as far as 2024 goes, that sure as heck was not supposed to happen. Uh, there's a lot going on here. As you said, almost every single day, we're learning more about this situation. And I was like you, Charlie. I grew up loving Pop Dad. You think about like, you know, the I'll Be Missing You song with Sting and him coming out to the MTV VMAs with it and Ben Around the World and all those songs with Mace. And he even had the song from the He's Godzilla. He's amazing. The Godzilla soundtrack. He had that huge, massive song, top 40, called Come With Me. I mean, it was Puff Daddy for a reason. But the more we learn about this, uh, you said that it was, uh, you know, Puff Daddy, Diddy, P. Diddy. You said he did it. How about P.D. File? 
because it looks like oh. we might be going to that. It looks like Puffy might become pedophile because you have to realize that if you are going to have a multi-agency, multi-coordinated, uh, dual raid on two sides of the country, one in California, one in down in Miami, at the same exact time in order to not tip him off or his people off, that just doesn't happen out of anywhere. Even though I know that the government loves mm -hmm. to waste money left and right and throw money away, that does not happen unless there is sufficient evidence happening here. Now, also, this clearly had to have been going on, this investigation, for months. And it all stems, as you said, from you know this, uh, this accusation that came out last year. But the more we learn about this, it reminds me of how everybody kind of knew that something was going on with Harvey Weinstein. You know, man, you remember how like yes. Rick, Ricky Gervais had gone on the award show and like would make jokes and ever those uncomfortable jokes. Well, now we're looking back, and it was always almost like the unspoken truth about Puffy, but you couldn't really go too far with it because he was so powerful. But you've had Kanye West going at him now for years. Everyone just thought he was crazy because it was during his Kanye crazy era, but he was calling him out. You've had multiple accusations throughout the years that kind of like got pushed aside, hushed money. 50 Cent is now yeah. calling him out. 50 Cent is calling him out. Gonna, he's going to scorch earth on him. So this is not good for oh, Puffy. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, what is interesting is the last I heard about 36 hours ago, he was back in America. Um they are all over him. They confiscated mm. the cell phone and all this stuff. He is in the state. So I think they're going to, if he, they need to, if they're going to charge him, you could expect something to happen probably sooner than later so that they revoke his passport so he can't leave. Um, and I think that's the way, it's, that's the direction it's heading. We also, most troubling out of all this is, well, not even most troubling. Obviously, all the accusations are horrible, heinous, uh, despicable, yeah. disgusting. Well, there's a lot of other names involved in this. And we found out that one of these people, one of these uh, the, these women that have been accusing him, also went on to say that he had video cameras in all his rooms. And like a lot of these rooms where these parties were taking, uh, taking place, allegedly, of course. And that couldn't be good because he had a lot of celebrities, a lot of entrepreneurs. This could get, this oh, might just be. Oh, yeah. The bottom of something that could be a lot bigger. We're already hearing a lot more names. I wonder out. where he's stashing those videos. Or like, do you think that those have already been confiscated by police or Homeland Security when they did the raid the other day? Because, listen, if I'm a criminal or I'm doing something wrong, the last thing you want to do is keep evidence of the crimes or the wrongdoings, right? But it seems like People like this, like the very power hungry, such as P. Diddy, keeping these mementos almost is like, you know how like serial killers will keep like a little bit of like something from all of their victims as a way for them to remember the crimes. Like it's just like some sick little twisted thing that they do. Yeah. I mean, it seems like that's kind of like with the same thing if P. Diddy was actually videoing the sexual assaults, the the gang bangs, the the rapes. I mean, well, kind you, of idiot you know saves those kind of things. But where I wonder where they're hidden. You, you could you could say mementos, kind of like that aspect. I think you keep them for leverage. I think that's why you know I mean like that like you keep those for leverage if you do have this kind of tape for exactly you know if something like this ever comes comes to light. It is interesting to say this because this kind of just mm. broke. I, you put these two things together. Last year, Puff Daddy, and anybody can you know can, can follow along for this one, right? So last year, Puff Daddy sold back, gave back all the um, originals and all the tracks that he had from other artists. All right, now you he had been holding onto those because he was getting all the money for them. Out of nowhere, he gave them all back to a number of the artists just out of goodwill. And when he was pressed upon this and his lawyers and his people were pressed oh. upon this, they were like, what are you doing? And this came in light of like Taylor Swift getting her, you know, her original out, you know, her own oh, stuff back, all this I stuff. I see where you're going with this. And the reason now that you, you put it together and Variety reported on it, Billboard, all this stuff when it happened. And we were like, oh, look, Puff Daddy, that was such a good thing. He probably did it to buy their silence because they can, now they own all the rights to it. 
And now that they have all the, he was probably rather than like laundering like fifty million dollars or thirty million dollars, like oh, I'll give you back your your you know. So now this now you get all the money from here on out, probably to buy their silence. The thing is, as we've seen time and time again with big people, when this happens to them, once somebody once something falls, all of a sudden everybody starts coming out of the woodwork, and you are on an Do island. Do you by know? Yourself. Which which artist did he give back the master records to? Which like, um, do you remember? Yeah, it, it's everybody from like from like a lot of like the up and coming uh, rappers into including Mace, who is obviously not a, you know Mace is huge. So it was Mace, Mary J. Blige, uh, the Locks, a lot of these big artists that he had already controlled because he was the producer and he was the writer and he was the uh, the label owner I for see. Bad Boy. Now he gave them back. I mean, Mace had been battling him for years. Then out of nowhere, when all when they were starting to get these rumblings and those accusations came out last mm. year, Buffy just hands over hundreds of millions of dollars in things. That just doesn't... I'm sorry. Buff that he's not doing this out of his own freaking goodwill, people. You got to connect Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Yep. That's a really good point. That's interesting. Yep. I mean... That's yeah, wild. I will be... I'm. I hope, I mean, we saw what happened with, you know, the Epstein list. I mean, we still don't have access to any of the names. I mean, besides maybe a select few that were kind of just like guessing were there uh, that were involved with all of those horrible crimes. But if we get access to who was at his house involved with all of these parties and wrongdoings, I mean, guns, I have a feeling my entire childhood and youth is just going to be in shambles because, I mean, yeah. I loved Puff Daddy and I loved Mace. And I have yeah. to imagine that a lot of the people that they were rolling with that were probably involved also were people that I loved. And this is going to be very, very hurtful to my soul. I mean, yeah, I'm uh, just waiting it, for it. Yeah. I'm waiting for I, the, uh, the other shoe to drop. You know what? Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to get those. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? Probably uh, won't. Yeah, but but we will see, I think, sooner than later, what exactly the feds are going to do. Now, you know, when, when they confiscate your, your your cell phones and your devices like that, they probably already had them tapped. I would think that they probably got a court order uh, because, like I said, it was a multi, multi-faceted raid that happened. But, uh, you know, you go through that history there, I'm sure there's some things, or they always say the crime, the cover-up is worse than the crime. The fact that he was doing all this stuff in recent weeks and recent months, I'm sure there's got to be text messages out there. There's got to be. So uh, oh, it's crazy. For I mean, sure. Listen, you bring up names like Bieber and Usher. Usher just did the freaking Super Bowl. So how deep does this go? I don't know if they ever fully get it all out there. I don't know if they want to get it out there. Uh, but, I mean, you bring in the drug aspect, the sex trapping aspect. This ain't good. This ain't good for anybody out there. But, uh, listen, if he's guilty, good. No. You better get caught. Send them to jail forever. Let's go. Well, it doesn't sound like anybody who is speaking out at this point. I, it's it, There's very few people that I've heard that have spoken up with kind words on behalf of oh, Diddy. No, it's more of people yeah. saying, oh, no, this, you know, this guy, you reap what you sow. Karma's yeah. a bee. He's They're getting what's coming to him. him. I mean, all, that's most of the down. things that I'm hearing. So he's on an island um, by okay. himself. For sure. He is on an island by himself. I can, I, I'm very interested to see what else comes out in these next few days as far as this is concerned because this is one of the top things <laughs> on my radar guns. Uh, also uh, on all of our radars is March Madness. Uh, yeah. We are advancing on both the men's and the women's sides in the NCAA tournaments. Uh, Caitlin Clark uh, still in the running to become a national champion. Yeah. Uh, but if that doesn't end up panning out, Really, you know, no no shame in her game because she's got so many offers on the table right now, Guns. A, she's being offered $5 million to join the big three league, Ice Cube's league, yep. uh, which would net her like $625,000 per game because it's an eight-game season, which, interestingly, is even more than LeBron is averaging per game for his current contract of 82 games. He's making like, I think it's around uh, five hundred eighty-one thousand yeah. dollars per game. So, Caitlin Clark will, you know, out earn LeBron. Uh, you know, if you look at the two side by side, at least 
This is crazy. And Caitlin Clark also, she just was added to the Team USA roster, uh, which means she's probably going to be competing at the Paris Olympics this summer for Team USA. She hasn't quite made it to the WNBA, but of course, by the time the Olympics roll around, she will have. So uh, this is phenomenal. I mean, Caitlin Clark cannot be stopped. She is a complete phenom. Yeah, Caitlin Clark is a straight up baller. Uh, she is single handedly, I would say, put uh, put the women's basketball on the uh, on the map to a whole different level right now. I mean, you look at uh, just the the mayhem, the chaos, the following that's been able to happen all across the country this past season where, you know, like I specifically my nieces went to uh, when uh, when when they played at Rutgers, people were lined up six hours ahead of time. And it was really exciting because, listen, I'm all about good sports. I don't care what color you are. I don't care any of that, like whatever. And uh, and and for her to be able to do this and dominate, I'm more like when she's playing, I've had more fun watching her than I have for a lot of these uh a lot of these games this past season when it came to the men's because there wasn't, you know, your Dukes and your UNCs. There wasn't like an undefeated team this year when it came to men's basketball, but at least her, especially as she was going to break the record, which she ended up breaking, by the way, all-time leading score for both men and women, all-time three-point yep. uh, 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 leader for women's basketball entirely throughout history. It's been exciting to see. Um, the big question is what comes next? All right. As you said, if I'm her, I would do that big three tournament. I think from the sheer. Of course, five million bucks. Yeah. You have to realize the biggest contract right now is two hundred and seventy thousand dollars for the entire season for the WNBA. She would make five million for 10 games. Let's go. Also, we know that she's starting to get calculated from a business standpoint. The NIL deals are coming in with Nike. Panini trading card. She's got $850 uh, packages going out with there. Uh, it's the first female that Panini trading cards has ever signed. First female athlete ever. But also, if you want to go viral, you want things to happen, you do it the big three. It's almost like the Jake Paul effect. You do those like, you do the couple yes. games, those couple events, get all the eyes on you. She goes to the WNBA. That's great for the sport in general. But ain't nobody going to be watching her consistently in the WNBA. I mean, it's good. I for, was going like, to ask yeah, that. Ain't nobody watching the WNBA. I mean, sure, maybe like a, a game will be on here or there. But to consistently watch the WNBA team for the casual, that's not going to happen. But if you play 10 <laughs> games on CBS Big Three <laughs> League, you can go viral like that. Let's go. Do it. I think she's got to do it. So I wonder, is she a is, – I don't know how the Big Three – I mean, once she signs – to the WNBA, will she still be eligible to play in the big three for yeah. seasons thereafter? Or is this, okay, she will be. Yeah, so so what happens, I had Ice Cube on not too long ago, we were talking about like him bringing in like some NBA players. He was talking about perhaps bringing in Kyrie for a little bit. What it is is the crossover for the WNBA and the big three is only two games. So as far as schedule goes, like okay. she'll be able to kind of work that out. The bigger issue is, would a team that's going to sign her and give her money allow her to also do something else at the risk of her perhaps getting injured? That's why you don't really see another Bo yeah. Jackson or Deion Sanders because you don't want somebody playing football, also playing baseball, and vice versa if you're going to be giving them a lot of money. But I think she has all the negotiating power in the world, Caitlin Clark does. I was going to say, she has so much leverage. <laughs> She's like, she oh, do you don't want me to wants. do this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's and for like her hard. to give up $5 million, if that's the going rate for every season moving forward, I would be like, okay, well, then I'm not playing for your team. If you're going to yeah. pay me 200 something thousand dollars and I can make $5 million from eight See games, ya. I will just play in the big three <laughs> yes. and I will start my own empire. Yes. I'll start my own basketball league. My own and, basketball and, league. and goodbye to oh, you. Wait. You won't have anyone watching you, Indianapolis Fever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. She, it's 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 all things Caitlin Clark. Needless to say, they they have a lot. They need to invest. They have to. She she's going to be like the LeBron in the fact that LeBron picks and chooses which coaches he has. LeBron James pretty much runs the league as oh, we yeah. know. He dictates uh, everything. Dictates everything. That's what she would she would be like. Um, but I still think that you do the big three. I think you just keep that viral momentum going. Um, listen, she, she's a competitor. She can be annoying at times just because, especially as we see more and more of her, she's, she, she, you know, she complains here and there, but the bottom line is she's fun to watch. And I, you know, if, if you, Michael Jordan was annoying too. Kobe, like if, if you're that good, you have that competitive aspect inside of you that you are going to just be a pain in the ass at times. <laughs>
Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so while a lot of people were watching basketball yesterday, they were also watching Guns opening day. Yes. Uh, the MLB season is officially upon us. Uh, one of the cooler moments from yesterday were three of the officers from the uh, Maryland Transportation Authority police crew who were, in essence, responsible for saving the lives of a lot of people who could have been on that bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, the other day when it collapsed. Uh, They were honored right before the third inning of the game. Uh, That was a really cool moment. You know, we always see different types of celebrities and uh, heroes being honored at these games. I feel like this was especially a, a great moment for our country and to honor members of the police force who quite right. frankly don't get enough recognition as it is um uh, but truth, yeah. guns i want to i want to i want the lowdown what else did we miss as far as opening day was concerned talk to me all right yeah now listen opening day greatest day in baseball for sure let's uh i'll break it down for you a little a little a little catch up for everybody out there around the bases with guns here we go you're just waking up right now this is what you've got <laughs> you've got the dodgers all right, the biggest story the last couple of weeks has been Shohei Otani, as we all know. The Dodgers are a bad team, Charlie. A bad team. They came out so winging and crushing yesterday. You had Mookie Betts hit a home run. So this is their lineup. Mookie Betts hits a home run. Then it's Shohei Otani. He got two hits. After him, it's Freddie Freeman, who hit a home run. Right there alone, that is a stacked one, two, three right there. The Dodgers crush as we thought they would. The Yankees, all right? My team, New York Yankees, let's go. It was a battle back and forth between them and the Houston Astros. You had Juan Soto, okay? We threw him a ton of money. Juan Soto, going to be the biggest free agent after this year. He comes up, drives in an RBI, but ninth inning. Base is loaded. He gets the ball. Right field, all right? He's playing right field. Should, you know, picks up the ball, throws the runner out <laughs> at home. Let's go. Yankees end up winning five to four. Amazing there. <laughs> Mike Trout for the Angels hit the first home run of the season right there. Of course, it would be uh, Mike Trout. Of course, Shohei Otani left the Angels. So there's going to be a good storyline there. But how about this? Let's end on a little bit of a fun note right here. The Orioles who have massive expectations. They won 101 games last year. You just mentioned about the good thing that they did there, honoring the brave women and uh, men and women that go out there to put on their, uh, you know, put their lives on the line and help those people on the bridge and all of us every single day. Not only did they honor them, but their new owner, all right? The Orioles have been part of this family, had these this family, the Angelos, for years. And they were, let's just say, the Oriole faithful didn't really like them th- that much. The new owners come through. This guy's name, Mike Arietti, goes to the bar across the street beforehand, buys everybody beers, starts taking up everybody's bar tap, starts drinking with them ahead of the game. That's the ultimate person who gets it, Charlie. W's all around. Wow. And the Orioles would end up winning. That's how you bring in your fan base. You start drinking with them. Let's go. That's how you win them over. Come on now. That is literally amazing. Uh, I wonder what the bar tap was. Yeah, they that's yeah, I I, God knows what that tap was, but something tells me that considering he bought the team or at least a majority ownership for about 1.4 billion, I think it was, I think he can afford a couple Miller lights at that bar. (laughs) Okay, well, we have one fan base that was really happy, but how about the Oakland A's? I mean, this Uh is the last season, they're in Oakland, then they say so long, which uh. Oakland's just a complete dump, so, you know, I'm sure that the team itself, management, coaches, owners, they're probably like, we cannot wait to get the hell out of here. But, you know, this is tough for fans who have devoted their lives to being loyal, to watching them, to supporting them. They were protesting last night. They were in the parking lot. They were, you know, yelling, throwing a fit. I mean, what do you do, right? You might have had more people, at least definitely for the start of the game, in the parking lot than inside it was pathetic yeah they didn't even go in the stadium a lot of them no no no, they 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 didn't even they didn't even bother to go in to watch the game they said screw you we ain't supporting you i feel you know you do feel bad for the players especially the ones that are like relatively new and the rookies who have nothing to do with any of this like you're part of the of of a laughing stock but this goes to obviously the ownership there listen sports fans are rabid Anybody watching right now, you are a lunatic. You are a rabid person. And that's why we love you because we're also the same way. But you're screwed with the fan. The fan is ultimately always going to win in the end. 
I don't care how long it takes. They're always, the fan will always get their revenge in the end. And right now you've got the Oakland A's looking like the Cleveland Indians from like Major League, the great movie, by the way, where they're trying to sell the team. I mean, it is just a mess in Oakland right now. Uh, you know, th- these players are like, these players are like, probably have to get like escorted back to their car so they don't get like mugged because nobody's in the, nobody's around the, the stadium to like protect them. You know how like you walk out of a stadium, you're like, oh, at least there's people around. Nobody's going to these games. So it's probably just full of criminals all around in Oakland because the city's falling apart from a crime standpoint. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, oh, I, I, I don't know that I can mention anything positive about Oakland at this point, but no. Kanz, I have a question. Have you yeah. ever been hit in the face with a baseball? No, uh, no, I, I, I've gotten hit in the head playing baseball, but I had a helmet on. But I know I haven't got, I haven't got, I try to keep okay. all balls away from my face. You know what I mean? I try to keep that from not happening. Sm- smart move. Yeah. Smart move. Well, I was in high school, I was hit in the face with a softball. I was no. warming up, I was in the gym. It was, it was before school started, and I was catcher. So I was warming up with the pitcher. And also because it was winter and it was like preseason conditioning the boys baseball team was also in the gym practicing at the same time and i had a huge crush on one of the guys on the baseball team (laughs) so because i was distracted and checking out my crush jess my pitcher throws the softball (laughs) hits me square in the face everybody saw my nose completely just blew up started bleeding it was horrible but it brings me to my next question yeah have you been hearing about all of the girls getting punched in the face as they're walking around New York City. And would that be worse than getting hit in the face with a softball or baseball? Oh, jeez. Well, first of all, that is, uh, I can only imagine you just being like, you know, trying to be all like cool and impressive and just like trying to check out this guy. That's exactly. So- I was trying to be cool too. It's like a Marsha Brady getting hit with the football in the face. You know what I mean? That was you just getting him right in the yes. face with the softball. <laughs> like all of my nose. Yeah, it was so like, it was not a good look for me. It was not a good look for me. You, Thank God my nose wasn't broken. I also love that you know the pitcher's name. It's like, oh yeah, you're over it, but you know every moment of what happened and her name and everything still. All these years later, you remember exactly. Oh yeah, no, I know. Name. I could even name the guy I had the crush on, but I won't I won't give him a shout out at this point. I don't even there I don't even know, know if he knows who I am anymore. But yeah. Anyways, guns, no, New, girls yeah, are getting yeah, hit in the City face not, yeah, as they're walking good, down right. the streets. It, it's disgusting. And uh, it just shows, yeah, it just it shows how out of New York City is a cesspool right now. And people are like, oh, you're over-exaggerating, over-exaggerating. Absolutely not. And this is what happens when you have the criminals running the streets. When there is no fear of the law, when there is no fear yeah. of repercussions, when there's no fear of punishment, then anything can go. I liken it a lot to like the, the crime. If you don't start punishing people that are shoplifting from a lo- from a smaller standpoint, then they're only going to escalate it. They start with like, you know, they might steal a couple pairs of Nikes. Then all of a sudden they go up to the Apple store and they're stealing tens of thousands of dollars worth of things. Then they probably do Grand Theft Auto and they're probably eventually going to use a weapon. And guess what? Then you're in deep trouble as well. If you don't put fear into these people, this is what's going to happen. These people, these, these girls are getting literally, it's, it's a lot of them just getting whacked. Well, we have- we have a face. video of it, Guns. Let's just yeah. let's just watch it really quickly so people can get really a sense of what's happening. Let's Crazy. roll the clip. You guys, I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. I can't even talk. Literally, I fell to the ground and now this giant goose egg is forming and I'm like... So I, I have fallen victim to uh, the... <laughs> The um, men in New York City are lifting an elbow or trying to punch innocent girls on the street, except I wasn't on my phone. I was with my coworkers walking in Times Square. So be safe. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. First of all, do not walk in Times Square. Bad idea ever. I don't care. There is no reason if you are living in New York City to be walking in Times Square. But anyways, guns, this is horrible that... People are minding their own business and, and there are clocked, clocked quite literally just face. lunatics. Yeah. Yeah. Who are just looking to cause trouble and, you know. So now it's not only I like if you go on the subway that you completely like you innocent people who can't defend themselves. You go to the subway, you have to stand against the wall, obviously, because 
People are getting shoved into the tracks and teams at least once a week by these nut jobs that are just running around. But then you also have these people that now it's almost becoming, you know what? It's probably going to be like called like the knockout challenge or something. I can see this going viral on TikTok where you're just going to slug people in their face because that's how crazy we are as a society because you're not going to punish these people or, or when you find them eventually or anything like that. I, then I bet you, dude, if you if you get hit in the face, going back to your original thing about what would hurt more, if you get hit unexpectedly and you get punched in the face and you don't know, like that could cause serious damage. You can fall, you can hit your head on the sidewalk. Like, yeah. you can, people have died from something like that. So uh, we we can't, it's, it's, it's not cool. It's not funny. I don't know exactly who's doing this, but uh, we need to step it up. As we saw even this past week with that horrific killing of uh, an NYPD um, uh, officer who left behind a wife and a one-year-old because the person that he was, uh, that they went up, it was two officers. They went up to a parked car combined. They had 35 arrests. The two of them, one was 21 times. The other was unbelievable times and they kept getting released. New York city, figure it out because it's going to happen to you or one of your friends or family members, unless you do something about it now, bottom line. Yeah, two more victims overnight. One of the women was 64 years old. That's such a shame. But I'm, I mean, if you look at it, Ubers are too expensive to take all the time. Uh, Subways aren't safe to take. And now walking on the street is not safe either. So I'm not really sure how we're supposed to get around. But I guess we'll figure it out, won't we? Uh, Guns, thank you so much, as always, for your time and insight. Always have a great time with you. So go enjoy your weekend. Watch some baseball, watch some basketball. Do may whatever makes betting, you happy. May the betting odds be ever in your favor and everybody else is favor this weekend. All right. Win that money. Win that money on March Madness. Let's go. May the betting odds well, be Well, I just favor. won four dollars. I just won four dollars from Powerball. I didn't win the jackpot, but I I won four dollars. So I, I will I will chalk that up as a major win heading into the weekend. Okay, guns, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys, that is all the time we have. We have a really fun show coming up for you on Monday. I have a great guest, uh, actually a great two guests. One of them can't speak, but I am going to just leave it at that. Make sure you're tuning in Monday. Really fun show in store for you. In the meantime, make sure you're following me on social media at Charlie on TV. Have yourselves a great Friday, a wonderful weekend, and I will see you on Monday.